CNN FM, the financial network. And let's tell you now that affirmative action is one of the most divisive issues in politics. It affects many lives, including those of business owners. Many states are now pushing for legislation that would end affirmative action. Joining us now to discuss the issue is Robert Simmons. He's a small business consultant with Investar. Good morning to you, Mr. Simmons. Good morning. First of all, uh, take us through Prop 209. What are the, what are the okay. main... Prop 209, our civil rights, California Civil Rights Initiative Act, uh, was introduced by uh, several uh, Congress people in um, California. And what it really talks about is uh, the end to uh, preference programs in education and procurement and employment hiring in the state of California. Mm -hmm. now, now that proposition was uh, disallowed, but yet you're telling us similar ones are a trend across the country? Yes, as a result of the Prop 209, uh, there's a bill in New Jersey called 25, A2553, which serves to eliminate some of the preference programs in terms of um, employment, education, and hiring practices in the state of New Jersey. So there really has been a backlash? Then. Yes, there's been a major backlash. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, if you look at the statistics with small businesses, especially African-American businesses, mm -hmm. some 620,000 of them uh, in, the, in the United States, and 85% of them don't have employees, and some 95% have average sales of some $52,000. Before we get into the implications, if this were passed in, in New Jersey, do you see indications that other states are, are trying to uh, put an end to some aspects of affirmative action? Well, now that the election's over, more and more uh, Congress people and elected officials are coming forth uh, with their opinions and their ideas. There's been rulings in, in Florida as well as in uh, Washington, D.C. about some of the uh, programs and policies that are being affected by small businesses. Well, now, for years, contracts were awarded to minority businesses uh, as part of the law. Yes. What do you see will happen to these businesses should this, uh, should this initiative take hold? If this takes over, there's going to be this major backlash. Minority businesses are already suffering as a result of some of the programs that are being eliminated, and many other states are coming forward. So it's increasingly more difficult to see what's going to happen. We don't know actually what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. how, how can minority businesses uh, adapt? How should they be reacting? Well, there's a state of hysteria in the minority business community because many of these small businesses rely 100% on these different programs and contracts supported by the federal and state government. They should start to merge with other companies because uh, synergy is not just limited towards large institutions, mm -hmm. like Chemical Bank and Chase Manhattan, but small institutions can merge together, come forward, and strengthen themselves that way. They consolidate just to survive uh, yes. in many aspects. So exactly. do you see a trend in minority-owned businesses uh, consolidation? Do you see them merging with each other to gain strength? Well, Americans are typically individualistic. Other cultures like African Asians are much more collectivistic. Um, the ego has become a major part of the business uh, mm -hmm. area. Not being able to work together seems to prevent minority businesses from growing. Do you see minority businesses merging with other minority businesses, or do you see uh, non-minority owned businesses seeing this as an opportunity to, to pick up some minority ownership and then maybe themselves benefit from uh, whatever affirmative action laws remain? I, I think I see a lot of minority businesses uh, talking about it. First thing is getting out to the table, discussing it, finding out what sort of avenues I can take, what sort of business lines they're in, if it's comparable and if it's compatible is the first thing. We should also be talking about uh, women who represent a minority and also have been awarded contracts based on their uh, status as women. Are, th is, are they threatened as well? Yeah, they're threatened as well. Their growth has been uh, some 46 percent between the year 1987 to 1982, but they face the same challenges as minority-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so very quickly, do you actually see uh, minority-owned business people sitting down, as you say, at the table and talking, or is it, are you sounding the alarm bell that it's time for them to start? Talking? I think I'm sounding it at the same time. I'm looking at uh, some of the trends that I see small businesses gathering together. I think that this is something that they must do if they're going to Would that be your number role. one piece of advice then to, yes. to minority-owned businesses? Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. get together, sit down, talk about it. Maybe There's no other way. Great. Robert Simmons, you are the uh, of the Investar Corporation. You are the small business expert. Thanks for joining us Thank here this you. morning. All right.